morning, great class. Today we are going morning. to have morning, morning, Sean, morning, TC, in Taylor. Today we are going to have a lesson on heritage, social studies. Heritage, social studies. We last uh, time we were together, we learned about heritage and um, shelter and heritage sites. Who can tell us the monuments that we managed to talk about the last time? Because we want to um, finish our talk on that lesson. Who can remember what we talked about on heritage, shelter and heritage sites? Yes, TC? Um, we learned about, um, about the Great Zimbabwe. We learned about Great Zimbabwe. Thank you, TC. That's one of the heritage sites we have in Zimbabwe. Which other heritage sites did we learn about from Great Zimbabwe? Yes, Sean? Matopo Hills. Matopo Hills, yes. It's also known as Matojeni. It's another heritage site that we learned about. Anything else that you can remember? Any other one that we talked about? There is one in Blawayo. That you have forgotten about. Which one is that one? That I said we must go and visit it. Teacher? The one in Blawayo. Yes, Sean? Kami ruins. Kami ruins, yes. We talked about the Kami ruins. And there's another one that looks like the Kami ruins. We said the Kami ruins. These are monuments that are found west of Blawayo. They were built by the people of the Torah. Okay? And after the Torah people were chased away from the Kami ruins, they built another monument, which is called the Zodoshim, which is also similar to the Kami monument. And then we also talked about the mana pools. We said the mana pools, they are situated in the north of Zimbabwe. That is close to the Zimbabwe way. Okay. The way it marks the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. And uh, all right. So the last time we talked about Great Zimbabwe, we said Great Zimbabwe monument was built by the Shona ancestors. And we said it is found 27 kilometers southeast of Mashingo. We said the name Zimbabwe comes from Great Zimbabwe. What is the Shona name that was given to Great Zimbabwe that changed where we got our name Zimbabwe? Anyone who can tell me that name from Great Zimbabwe, where we got our name Zimbabwe from? Yes, Michaela? Zimba Zimbabwe. Thank you. Zimba Zimbabwe. We said Great Zimbabwe monuments are called Zimba Zimbabwe. This means the houses of stone. Okay. This means houses of stone. Remember, next week we're going to be making our end of the games. In a multiple choice question, you can be asked where does the name Zimbabwe come from? It comes from Zimbabwe. Okay. And you can be asked what does Zimba Zimbabwe mean or mean mean? It means houses of stone. Okay. We talked about the common monuments. We said these are found near the Kami River. Or using the Kami Road. Upstreet using Pumula South Road there, you get to, to Kami, that Kami Road. And we said it was built by the Torah people. Okay. And we have the Jojo monuments. They were also built by the Torah people after they were removed from the Kami monuments. The monument in Zambezi Valley. Okay, in the Zambezi River. Matopo Hills is a national park. What did we say is found in Matopo Hills? There is someone's grave in Matopo Hills. Who is that man? Yes, Sean. Sure. Yes, Sean. Cecil John Rose. Cecil John Rose. And we said, what is the significant about Cecil John Rose? What did he do? What, what is his relationship with Zimbabwe? Why would this Bible have a grave that belongs to a white man? What is so significant about Cecil John Rhodes? What did he do? What did he do that is so significant to Zimbabwe? And I said that uh, Zimbabwe never used to be called Zimbabwe before independence. It was given a name after this man. That is his significance. Anyone who can tell me, anyone who still remembers. Okay, I say that Cecil John Rhodes is the former British colonial president. Okay, he was the president during that time of Rhodesia. Okay, Zimbabwe used to be called Rhodesia. 
before its independence. Okay, you remember we have our independence that we celebrate in April on in April. Okay, so 18 April. Before 18 April 1980s, Zimbabwe was not known as Zimbabwe. It was called Rhodesia. It was after Cecil John Rhodes. If you see his surname is R H O D E S. That's Rhodes. It is I to make it Rhodesia. Okay. So Cecil John Rhodes is the British, the former, the founder of former British colony Rhodesia. Okay. He was the president. Okay. Of Rhodesia. He's the colonial person. He was behind everything that happened during the struggles of Zimbabwe. That's why Cecil John's uh, grave is of significance. When you go to Matopo Hills, people tend to go and visit and see his grave there. I remember Bryce was there during the lesson. He said that he has gone there. He said that there are ashes. There is a, there are ashes, there's ashes there. And people, you can go inside there and you can see his grave. You must go and visit the Matopo Hills, okay? So also this Matopo Hills, there's, it's a national park. You can go there, you see animals, okay? You can see some animals, you can see the grave, you can see some boulders. They are balancing rocks in the hills. These rocks are made of granite rock. Okay, all right. Now we want to talk about another monument, which is called the Inyanga Mountains. Inyanga Mountains. Anything you say about Inyanga Mountains? Anyone who has heard about the Inyanga Mountains? The, uh, TC, have you heard about the Nyanga Mountains? Yes, ma'am. The Nyanga Mountains, Mount Nyangani is the highest mountain in Zimbabwe. Okay, so we can take that down. You might be asked, which one is the what which one is the highest mountain in Zimbabwe? It is Mount Nyangani. Let me spell Nyangani for you. N-Y-A. N Y A N G A N I. I'll repeat it again. N Y A N G A N I. Mount Nyang. It is the highest mountain in Zimbabwe. This mountain is found in Inyanga. Okay, the place is called Inyanga. That's where this Mount Inyangani is found. The Inyanga Mountains contain a lot of beautiful sites, Mutarazi Falls, so which means there are some falls. If you go to see the Inyanga Mountains, you can also see some falls. And the way everything is there, there is green, there is a nice breeze. Okay, wherever there are mountains, there is a nice breeze there. Welcome, Bryce. Where are you, Bryce? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Good. Thank you for joining us. We are continuing our lesson on heritage. Shelter and heritage, as I was just talking about you, saying that you have, afraid, you have gone to see Cecil John Rhodes' grave. You have been there to Matopos, right? Yes, ma'am. And I remember Bryce said that his hometown is Matopos, so he knows Matopo very well. It's a very beautiful site, you should all go and see this very big site. So now we're talking about Nyanga Mountains, which is the highest mountain in Zimbabwe. Okay, it is found in the Inyanga. Inyang, Inyanga. It is found in Inyanga. The another uh, heritage site is called the Chirinda Forest. Chirinda Forest. Let me spell Chirinda for you. C H I C H I R I N D A. C H I R I N D A. The Chirinda Forest. Chirinda Forest is a botanical, it's a reserve, okay? It is about 950 hectares. It is situated on the slopes of Mount Selinda, 30 kilometers south of Chipinge, highlands of Manikal and Zimbabwe, okay? So it is a natural reserve. If you like this forest, you can go there for picnics, you can go there for brides. Who has been to Hillside Dam here in Blawayo? Anyone who has been to Hillside Dams? Anyone who has been to Hillside Dams? Yes, I Hillside Dams, you can see you just go there, there's that greenery, you go there, you want to have um, this breeze, you can breathe in natural breeze. So the Chirinda Forest has the same effect. You go there, you, uh, you find a place to sit, you have a picnic with your family, you feel the natural breeze, okay? 
here in town you don't have a nice air anymore because the air is contaminated with smoke but when you go out into the natural forest then you're able to breathe in nice blowing air okay all right our um, last um heritage site is the chinoy caves the Chinoy Caves. Let me spell Chinoy for you. Chinoy is C-H-I-N-H-O-Y-I. C-H-I-N-H-O-Y-I. Caves. Caves, C-A-V-E-S. The Chinoy Caves. Is there anyone who has been to the Chinoy Caves here? Can hear a small voice that is saying yes. <laughs> From behind, who has been to Chinoy Caves? Yes, Bryce. What have you seen in Chinoy Caves? Please, can you tell us what have you seen? There's, there's blue water. There's blue water. Yes, it was nice. What else? Let's say Bryce you go to Chinoy Caves. Yes. Try to describe it. How is it like? Because we want to feel the caves. Are there caves in there? Yeah. Are there? Well, I'm saying um. Please describe the place. You are talking about blue water. Where do you, how do you find this blue water? Do you go through somewhere that you can go through and find blue water? Can you yes, ma'am. There are a lot of caves. There are a lot of caves. Yeah. Okay. So the Chinoy Caves. When you go to the Chinoy Caves, you park outside and then you know how caves are like. Um, do you know how caves are like? Where lions stay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So when you get to Chinoy Caves, you will see some, there are a lot of caves, a lot of caves, and then you go through the entrances. But as you go through the entrances, you go through, there's this special entrance that uh, Bryce is talking about, where there's the blue water. You go through the entrance, and then you go, like you're going down, okay? And then when you reach downwards, that's where you find this blue water there. Okay, the Chinoy Caves. And everyone is amazed uh, about how that blue water came to be because what what uh, who can tell me what makes water to be blue like the sea to be blue what makes water to be blue yes Michaela the reflection of the sky the reflection of the sky right the reflection of the sky makes water to be blue but if you are going through a cave is there any sea up there no Bryce your hand is up yes Bryce. Because the water will be too deep. The water will be too deep, yes. The water is too deep, right? And there is no blue sky. But the, the water is still blue. Do you understand? That's the significance of the Chinoy caves. Okay. There is no sky, but the water is blue. Okay. That's a mystery. How does that water become blue? No one has ever answered that mystery before. So it's something, it's a place where you have to go. And it has been said that long ago, these caves, people used to stay in them. When you walk in there, there are paintings on the wall for those caves of the people who used to stay there. You can even hear some noises in there. There's a lot that you can experience when you go to Chinoy Caves. It's a wonderful site, it's a traditional site actually, where you can go there and experience the life that was lived by people who used to stay there from long ago. The Chinoy Caves, they are located 10 kilometers west of Chinoy. Look how people call them Chirorozi. They call them. Stories tell that these caves were once used by the local people as a refuge from aid by the Rangers before colonization. Um, before the, before um, independence, uh, way back, there used to be tribes like the Shona tribes, they used to stay alone, the Ndebele tribes used to stay alone. So the Ndebele tribes, they used to raid other smaller groups, okay? So they used to raid other smaller groups, like taking them over, taking slaves or taking over wealth or cows or whatever. So whenever they were doing that, the Shona people were said to have been going into these caves to hide, okay? So that's why we notice that when you get in there, you can see and you can see some paintings that were done because they used to hide in there, okay? So these uh, places uh, were like a place, places of uh, people to hide in there. That's one of the pictures of the Chinoy Caves, okay? So for now, um, is there anyone who has a question that is related to our monuments? Yes, Sean? 
Uh, isn't it they say that in Chinook case there is water? So when they are getting in the entrance, how do you go, go through the case when there is water? Okay, so you know what happens, uh, Sean? When you get through the caves, as Bryce said, the caves are deep underground, right? Like they are, you go down. So when what happens is you enter the cave from a ground level, okay? From your ground level where we are right now, right? You are entering the cave. But as you are entering the cave, you are somewhat going down. Do you understand? You, as you are entering the cave, you are going through a pathway. It's like a pathway. Okay. So you are entering the cave through that pathway because as you are going, you can be bending while least you are going through the cave, right? And when you go down through the cave, then you find where there is the opening now. Okay. You are now a bit deep underground because they usually write down how many kilometers or meters you will be as you are going down. So when you get there, that's where there is water. Okay, so the water is not necessarily at ground level, it is underground. So there is a cave that allows you to go through it until you get underground, okay? And there are even, what you call them, stairs or steps, yes, you, the stairs where you'll be, as you are going down, you'll be going down using, walking on steps or stairs, like you're going down. And when you get down to the steps, you are not even allowed to go closer to this water, but I don't know nowadays, Way back when I used to go, they never used to allow because there's like a fence that is around this water. This place is like this, Sean. Can you see? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So do you see, this is where the water is. And you will be up there and you'll be looking down this water. And can you see there are these big rocks that are surrounding the water? And it is said that this water is deep. If you go down there, um, you cannot come out, okay? Because no one knows how deep it is. And no one knows whether or if uh, it ends or it doesn't, okay? So when you go there, there are a lot of restrictions that are there. They tell you, don't go closer, don't do this. Like when you go to Victoria Falls, right? You're not allowed to go closer because they say you can just step on something and you can fall. Do you understand? So you'll be a bit closer, but outside there's a boundary fence. And then there's another boundary fence that is inside. So you can stand there and you can watch the water. And the water, sometimes it twinkles like there are stars, okay? But that's why we are saying there is no sky. And, uh, but this water will be twinkling, this water will be blue and all that. This, these are the wonders and the historical sites that we have in, um, in Zimbabwe. Did I manage to answer you, Sean, on that one? Yes, ma'am. Takuta, your hand is up. Yes, TC? I, I wanted to ask Tija, was yes. it like that with water, <coughs> like that? Oh, um, it, it was uh, how the people pass long time before before there was a fence. I think before there was a. I think maybe before there was a fence. Maybe the there are stories told that the divers, you know, people who let's call them what can you call them archaeologists, people who love to study about history and what happened in the past. Okay, they discover this place, right? So when they discover this place, a lot of them. As they were going down the stairs, okay? Remember now there are steps that were put there, the stairs. They never used to be there. So what happened was they ended up trying to, what you call it, they tried to modify it because people would slide and some people were, were lost in that water, okay? Because as they were going down the cave, maybe you try to look in, into the water and then you, 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 you fall inside. So that's when they decided to watch to put the fence, but I'm sure before there was before there was a fence, I think the people would just go there and look at it. But the people, the archaeologists, and all those people who study the past and heritage sites, they are the people who end up putting a fence around it just to make it a a tourist attraction center, so that when people come in and children come in, they just wanted to protect people, okay? Because they notice that it's a slippery place when you're going down there, okay? Even the steps, they're a bit slippery. So I think they just put the fence to try and accommodate people to come in and view it as a, because it's a tourist attraction center. Most of the times when people go there, they just want to, you pay to go there and see it. So I think they try to modify it in a way so that people are able to come in and see it in a tourist attraction way. But I guess way before there was no fence. The fence was put by archeologists to, to modify it into a tourist attraction center. And I think maybe even the steps as well. 
they were put in place there to modify it so that people could be able to walk down and to be able to walk up and all that. Did I manage to answer you, TC? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, please, let's go and see our heritage sites, okay? Let's not wait for someone to come from United States of America, buy a ticket that is worth millions of Zim dollars for them to come and see Shinoi. For, for us, we can just manage to get a bus and go there. If you have a, a car with your parents, you can just put fuel, you go there, you come back, okay? So these are some of the nice heritage sites because Chinoy is, uh, I know before Harare, when you're going to Chinoy, somewhere there, I don't know the way, but I have been there. I don't know the directions, but I've been there. Yes, Michaela? But ma'am, how are you supposed to go with the coronavirus? Oh, yes, Michaela, thank you for reminding us. The coronavirus now, yes, it's the, it's, uh, but remember, we are hoping that coronavirus is going to end and we're going to go back to our normal lives, right? So when you go back to our normal lives, make sure Chinoy Caves is on your bucket list. Go and see the Chinoy Caves, okay? It's a wonderful site. These are places that were lived by our ancestors, okay? People who lived way back, okay? So now we want to look at the importance of the heritage sites to our history and culture. Why is it important for us to learn about these heritage sites? The heritage sites are a cultural resource that have brought development in the local people who live in the areas. So they are a cultural resource. When you go to Chinoy Caves, you learn about the Shona people, you go to Kami Ruins, you learn about the Torua people, you go to Matopo Hills, you learn about the history of Zimbabwe. Cecil John Rhodes, you learn about him, what was his significance. So these heritage sites, they are a cultural resource to us. They have brought development in the local people. Okay, look at people who stay in Chinoy Caves. Chinoy is developed, the roads are good, okay, because tourists come from all over the world to come and sit. So when you go to Chinoy, you, you know it's a well-developed place because when tourists come, they have to be hotels there, okay, and good hotels because the Chinoy Caves has developed that town. Do you understand? So it's a, they have brought development in the local people. If you go to Victoria Falls, that place is wonderful. The hotels are five-star standard hotels because they accommodate people from all over the world. So the heritage sites have brought development in the local people. If you go to Madobo Hills, it's one of the best. The roads are good. When you get there, everything is well done. It has brought so much development to us. Yes, Michaela? Um, my my grandparents went to the Victoria Hill, the Victoria Falls yes. Hotel, and ma'am, they sent pictures, and it looked so pretty. Yes, Victoria Falls is good. If we have five star hotels in Victoria Falls, the best hotels ever, because Victoria Falls itself is a heritage site. It has developed the town. Wange is developed. It's good, it's a mining town, it's a small town, but it's developed. If you see the lodges, there are five-star quality lodges that are there. The hotels, even as the residents, you have to make sure you have a lot of money for you to go to those hotels because they are of standard quality. They have been developed. The sites are of great value to the local people. The communities have received a number of benefits from the sites. We also get a lot of benefits from the sites. These are economic, cultural, educational, social, and environmental. We get economic, we get foreign currency, right? When we get someone from states to come here, they buy using their US dollars, they leave them here, we get our US dollars. Cultural, when you go to Chinoy Caves, you learn hey, your heritage, okay? You learn about where you come from. Go to Madoko Hills, you learn about Lope Hula, you learn about Mizikazi, you learn about Cecil John Rose. That's your culture, where do you come from? How did Zimbabwe come to be great Zimbabwe? We learn about that through our heritage sites. We have educational. Right now, we are learning, okay? We are educated enough. You can tell someone about your heritage. They say knowledge is power, right? When you have knowledge, you have power. That is education. You learn about social and environmental benefits, how to relate to each other, okay? Yes. So now we know that the Develes and the Shonas, they came together, they became a unified unit, they fought against the whites. 
That's social. We learn about how to relate with one another. We love one another. We care for each other. Okay, because we are learning from the different things that come from the heritage sites. Environmental benefits, we look at how the environment has been developed, new hotels, better places, nice things that have been developed. And there is employment creation of the local people. The people who are employed in Victoria Falls, they stay in Victoria Falls. From Chinoy, people who are in Chinoy, they know that there is work at Chinoy Caves. At Great Zimbabwe, there is a job for people in Great Zimbabwe. So people are employed as poor guards to show people around, okay? You have these poor guards, they show you around, they tell you about the history of the place because they are local people. Drivers are also employed to drive tourists around the parks. There are also hotels that employ people to cook and clean rooms where tourists stay when they visit. Yes, Michaela, your hand is up. Is it true that the Indigo tribe came from South Africa? I cannot hear, Michaela. Is it true that the Indigo tribe came from South Africa? It developed. The Indigo tribe came from South Africa. Is it true? Yes. Yes, it is true, Michaela. It is true. They are actually not the Ndebele tribe. They are actually called the Nguni clan. Yes, it is true. That's why you find that you can find some a Jojo beside, and you can also find a Jojo in KwaZulu Natal. Okay, so yes, it is true. Yes, it is true. So we have to learn about these heritage sites. They are so important. They knew they make us who we are. Okay, so I hope you managed to understand our lesson on shelter and heritage sites. I sent work for you. Okay. So let's write our work. Let's keep on revising. Next week, on Tuesday, we are having our exams on content. So for those who need some clarifications, please don't, don't um, uh, hesitate to call me or to send me a WhatsApp. Okay, so that I can explain some things for you, okay? That you need me to clarify for you, okay? So make sure you do that, okay? So let me give you a chance to say goodbye so that uh, we can uh, see each other again tomorrow. Uh -huh. tomorrow. Bye. See you again. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. See